Hello and welcome back to a brief pin overview. Uh, today I'm going to go over a pin that I recently purchased at the DC Pin Show uh, last weekend uh, in uh, right outside of DC in Virginia. And uh, I was fortunate enough to run into Andreas uh, Lambrow, uh, who started Classic Pens. Um, Andreas is very well known in the fountain pen community as being a wealth, plethora of information regarding fountain pens. You may know Andy for his book, Fountain Pen of Japan, which is a wealth of information, a pretty extensive, wonderful, life-size pictures of pens, just a wealth of information. He also wrote Fountain Pens of the United States and United Kingdom, Fountain Pens of the World. You get the gist. He knows a lot. He's very well regarded in the community. A lot of the uh, reviewers uh, in the Fountain Pen community purchased his classic Pens LB1. That was certainly an inspiration for my purchase of this, I'm sorry, LB1, LB5, I'm sorry. It was certainly an inspiration for my purchase of this LM1. Uh, those pins are made of some beautiful materials, which I will talk to about talk about in a second here. Uh, here is what came with the pen. You saw the, the outer white box that it came in. Uh, you open it up, you get your uh, congratulations on your heirloom pen. There's a lifetime warranty with this. Can't beat that. Uh, certificate of authenticity and I have here uh, the LM Flame Run LM1 Flame Red Limited Edition uh, 01 like in that number uh, for this beautiful beautiful pen here comes in the uh, a flip down box which is always nice and the, bit, the box itself is gorgeous I mean look at that it's just nice hard beautiful red box. Um, I know a lot of people don't care about the box pins coming, but if, if I'm going to get a nice pin, uh, give me a nice box. I'll take it. I kind of like that. Um, open it up. That's the Lambro name. This one is done under Lambro's name as opposed to classic pins. And here's the pin. Here's the star of the show. The LM1 Flame Red Limited Edition. Take a look at the finial. Uh, nothing there, pretty clear. Here's the clip. It's pretty sturdy. Comes down into that pointed arrow look, which he's so well known for. His pen that he's done on his own. Uh, the ring caps is classic. LM1, flame red, 01. I need to put my glasses on. Oh, 500, I believe that says. And that's the classic pen or the Lambro uh, logo. Just get a look at that, of this color. Um, it's it's interesting because I approached lit, uh, Andy's table and there was another pen he had out. Uh, and I was immediately drawn to the color. I remember seeing it in the LB5 videos of several folks. And I was like, oh, this is, this, this is that pen. Only to find out it's the LM1. Uh, however, this is the material. Which, which is that diffusion bonded acrylic. That's how you see the little layers going across here. What they do is they take it and they stack them on top of each other and then they cut it in such a way uh, that you get the appearance you see here. And it's absolutely stunning. So as I said, I was going up to his table and there, I, I picked up the pen, I picked it up, I started writing with it. I was like talking about how much I loved it. Another woman came over, saw that I was looking. I was like, oh, if you're not going to buy that pen, can I buy it? And uh, I said, sure, take a look at it. I was still thinking about what I wanted to do. I knew this pen was on my list to get one day, someday. Wasn't sure I was going to get it that day. Uh, she ended up buying the pen. Um, I was looking at it, and Andres was like, you really like that pen. You, you really wanted that, didn't you? Um, and then he pulled out this one, which had a better number series rise and had a 1.3 stub grind on it, which I like even better. Um, but nonetheless, we both walked away very happy, and Andreas must have been happy as well because he got two purchases. Um, but again, just taking a good look at this gorgeous material, 
um, when you're holding this pen, it's slight heft, not heavy, but it feels like a quality pen in your hand. It writes like a quality pen in your hand, and it's so beautiful. This doesn't even do justice to how gorgeous this looks. Um, when you're in here, you have the gold banding here. Um, it's just for decoration because it's not a piston filler. It is a uh, cartridge converter. The nib is beautiful. It's two-toned. And uh, it's very nice. It has the Lambro logo on it. Feels wonderful in the hand. Like it feels apt when you're writing with this as it glides across the paper. It's like you can feel <laughs> this the quality and elegance in your hand. I don't even know how to explain it, but you can feel it just from the weight that it has. Um, and it's not heavy at all, but it's not extremely light like some resin pins. It's like it's just perfect. I have small hands, um, so this is perfect for me to write with. Unposted. You can post it. It does add some length to the pen. It's too long for me. Probably not too long for those who have bigger hands. It posts well. Doesn't fall off. It posts semi-deep. Um, just really feels good in the hand when I'm writing. Not to mention the nib. Um, the section... It's not that thick uh, average width I'm gonna say I got like a 146 mount bunk I don't have the 149 uh, but I'm gonna it doesn't feel really that much bigger than my 146 I should bring it out and compare um, but it feels good for a person with little hands it feels great in my hand um, I mentioned it was a cartridge converter the nib the uh, I'm sorry the uh, Threads are pretty smooth going on and off. I have it inked up here, so I'm not going to take it out. I uh, don't remember whether it's a screw in or not, but those threads are awfully smooth. Like I said, feels great in the hand, looks good. Just can't. These, this does not really do justice on how well this looks. Hopefully, you can just see the striation from the uh, diffusion and acrylic bond, bonding there bonded acrylic uh, that's going through the pen. It's it's a unique technique he did in the way he stacked it and the way it was cut versus the way other acrylic pens are cut. And it's just gorgeous to the eye. It really is. Um, the nib, as I said, this 18 karat 1.3 stub. Purchased the pen from Andy. You know, it was... Uh, he doesn't um, smooth nibs or anything there. Um, I may have it, some additional work on the nib. Uh, it, it, you know, when I picked it up and worked with it a little bit, I had a slight hard stop. I smoothed it a little bit at its table. I, I, I'm comfortable in doing that a little bit. Um, I've, I've further done a little bit more at home. Um, I may at some point next pen show maybe have somebody just take it all the way home there for me in terms of smoothness. But it writes pretty good. I got to say I'm pretty happy with, with how it writes. And that's a segue into let me show you how it writes. Okay, the ink I'm going to be using for this is the Kyo, Kyo no Oto no Rebiro, uh, number one. It's a black ink. Uh, it's become one of my favorite black inks. Uh, some people see slight overtones of blue in it when they write. I see mostly black. It's highly sheening. I love it. I'm not going to write it out here, so I'm going to give you a good look at the bottle here. Um, it's got a great wide lid. Uh, you can get it from Anderson Pins, Van Ness Pins. I ordered this mail order from Hamilton Pins a little while back. Okay, let's go right into the writing sample. Classic Pins. As I said, um, I didn't have any nib work done on this. I may still need to make some slight adjustments. It's an 18K, 1.3. Stub. Horizontal stroke. The downstroke. You can see there's a major difference. I really like the line variation I get in this when I write with this pen. The 
the right thin that way, right thicker this way. You can get some great line variation out of it. That's no pressure. If I add a little pressure, you can see the ink really pours out. And look at the shine on that, on that black ink. Um, I don't really know if it's coming through here, but I love it. My hands are like really sweaty with this paper. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm gonna make up uh, my own little saying here. Uh, but you see, it does a good job. Like I said, I do need to have some work still done on it. I've not done that yet. I do plan to or make adjustment myself. I don't know. I did take the Richard Bennett smoothing class, but this is a great nib. I, I don't want to mess it up. Um, reverse writing. It does that. It's a very smooth nib. Uh, very smooth. Um, feels wonderful against the paper. You know you're writing on paper, just enough in terms of feedback not really any i don't hear anything when i write with it so i got a little skip in there it's got slight baby's bottom but like i said no work's been done on it you know andy sells great pens um, he's not there being a nibmeister. Um, that can be worked with. But I got to say, I love it. It writes very well. I love the, um, the grind on this pen. The stub. Italic. I love it, I love it, I love it. The ink flow. There's nothing I don't like about this pen. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's worth every penny. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you got something out of it. hope I, I did this pen justice because it, it is, it's awesome. Uh, it's right up there with the best, in my opinion. Um, if you did like it, please hit like. I would appreciate that. If you'd like to subscribe, do that as well. Um, as I come across neat finds and interesting tidbits, I certainly like to share them. I'm not a person who's going to like uh, be putting out videos every other day, flooding your, your, your mailbox. <laughs> um, um, but when I find something interesting, I, I just want to share the enjoyment and enlightenment that I got from it with, with, with my fellow pen community. So thank you so much and take care of yourself. Peace. Hope you enjoy it.